we can start all right so hello and welcome to the third and final session of the workshop on banking tax and american law organized by college it in collaboration with boston university school of law in today's session we'll be talking about how you can build a career after an llm in banking and finance law and to guide us through this our speaker for today is mr anupam roy anupam graduated with an llm in banking and finance law from boston university all the way back in 2011 after graduation he worked with tri legal and phoenix legal and he is currently working as an independent practitioner uh, anupam thank you so much for taking out time for today's session it's great to have you here and i am looking forward to our discussion uh, anupam i think you're on mute thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here yeah all right uh, so just one thing before we proceed Boston University is offering application fee waivers to those of you who wish to apply for an LLM at BU Law. The last date to apply is fifteenth April. If you wish to be a part of their fall twenty twenty two batch, you can write to us at info at college it dot org. If you wish to expedite the process for this waiver, and we will be happy to help you out. So, all right. Without further ado, I will go ahead and put up the questions on the screen, and we can kick off the session. if anyone has any questions in the middle please you can use the chat box you can unmute yourself whatever is convenient for you whatever you're comfortable with and do participate in the discussion uh but for now let's start with the session so today we'll be talking about a number of things we'll be talking about how you can build a profile for banking programs how to choose programs the relevance of work experience the banking program at bu law the kind of employment opportunities that are there in this field and so on uh starting with profile building first then So Anupam, you're one of the most senior and experienced speakers that we have had the pleasure of hosting at College It. So, based on this experience, what would be your advice to future applicants uh, as to how they can build a strong CV for an LLM in banking law? And more specifically, what are the kind of internships and co-curricular activities that they should be focusing on? Right. So, I mean, uh, for building a strong CV, I mean, when particularly you're looking at specializing in your llm and in this case in banking law you need to uh, at at the law school level itself you need to uh, do certain courses on banking law if it is being offered uh, or anything related to financial services that ways you have uh, some kind of grounding in uh, in in banking and financial law and you you will be uh, at least you will that point of time you'll get to know whether you are interested in the in this uh, in this area and uh, apart from that uh, there are uh, various online courses also uh, being offered uh, these days and uh, you you can uh, you can see if uh, if you can find any courses related to uh, banking and financial law and if you are um, if you have the opportunity to say work with a law firm or um, if you uh, if you're interning with a regulator in india uh, i think what that will do is it will give you the opportunity to work on real life work assignments and that ways you can uh, judge whether firstly that this area is is interesting for you and whether you can build a career in that and also what that will these will do is uh these when uh, you can put in your cv and this will enhance your uh, in, this will enhance your profile when you are applying to say law schools in us or law schools elsewhere and you will be better uh, able to justify your uh, your interest and your why you want to specialize in uh, in in banking and financial law. All right. Thank you for that, Anupam. Let's now jump into a crowdsource question that we received before the session. I'll just okay. read it out to you. Thoughts about the banking LLM at George Washington University Law School. So, what are your thoughts about it? I think they're also asking for a comparative perspective with BU Law. See, uh, I mean, I I cannot give. Uh, I don't have first-hand knowledge about the banking program at George Washington University. but uh, i know somebody who had asked me this question when uh, way back in 2011 because he had he had an offer from both the law schools and uh, he he ended up choosing uh, george washington because uh, i mean somebody advised him that he would be in the dc area i mean washington dc and there are a lot of regulators there and 
he'll be able to do internships. But I just feel that when I was applying uh, for my LLM and when I uh, zeroed in on banking and uh, finance program, I think uh, there were no universities which were really offering such a comprehensive, uh, uh, I mean, comprehensive mix of subjects in uh, this area. I just recall, I think Georgetown University was the only one which offered a specialization in securities regulation. Right. Even they did not have such a, uh, I mean, uh, these, these number of courses in banking and finance. And uh, so having gone through the course content and the course listing and uh, having studied what they were offering, I was convinced by uh, the program uh, at uh, Boston University. All right. Thank you for that, Anupam. Just to take that a step further, it's been more than a decade since you graduated. So uh, in all this time, what would be your advice to, uh, to future applicants in, in terms of how they should go about the process of shortlisting universities? What are the kind of factors that they should keep in mind? And secondly, uh, after all this time, what has, been, what has been your takeaway in terms of the pros and cons of attending BU Law? So, um, I mean, while shortlisting universities uh, for your LLM, I think you should have a look at the course listings. So if you have already worked in a certain area, I mean, that would be helpful to you uh, if you want to specialize or if you want to go in for a general LLM. Um, then you should, uh, so while looking at the course listing, you should thoroughly go through the course content. Uh, you should look at the faculty profile, uh, whether uh, there are, uh, you, uh, I mean, you, you, you should go through the uh, profile of the uh, people who will be teaching. Then, um, also, a very important factor, which I think uh, you will, uh, uh, I mean, a student will realize when they go for their uh, higher studies is the city in which you're staying. Because if you are uh, in a city like, uh, say, Boston, uh, that offers you a lot of internship opportunities in this field. Uh, Boston has a, uh, there are a lot of financial institutions and banks in Boston. It's a very important city from that point of view. And uh, you will have a lot of opportunities. So while doing the coursework, uh, I think Boston University also allows a financial services internship. Uh, so you will be able to do internship during the coursework because internship is extremely important for uh, getting a job in uh, US. I think that is where uh, the any firm will be able to judge uh, the quality of your work product. And I think that is extremely important. And I think uh, also uh, two other factors which uh, I want to point out is uh, universities have dedicated research centers. In this case, Boston University, uh, the banking and finance uh, department offers uh, certain uh, specializations within the uh, certain concentration within the banking and finance LLM. Okay. So you can, you can have a look at that and uh, you can choose to further specialize in, uh, in those areas. And another very important factor, which I at least was a criteria for me, and I think it will be a criteria for a lot of Indian students who are going on student loans, is the cost of the LLM. Yeah. I think the, uh, when I had applied, of course, the uh, Indian rupee was a bit stronger in uh, 2010. And uh, still, I think the fees of a number of US universities, and I, I'm, I can, in fact, name them, uh, Northwestern University, University of Michigan, at Ann Arbor, Cornell, the fees was just too exorbitant. I mean, I, even if you uh, wanted to apply to certain places, I mean, uh, I think for me also, the fee structure was a criteria. But of course, I mean, the, I looked at the course content and that is what I really wanted to do at uh, Boston University, so that attracted me. But uh, cost is also a very important factor, especially if you're not getting any uh, scholarships or um, uh, if you're, it is difficult to obtain uh, student loans. I think cost becomes a very important factor. Thank you for that, Anvam. That, that was a very detailed answer. Let's and now... Yeah, sorry, please uh, go. Uh, yeah, I just cons I would like to point out, although, I mean, that's something which also depends on, a, on, on the student. I think uh, there's a large student pool in Boston. It's a great educational city. So you'll have, you have universities. I mean, uh, you just, I mean, uh, within uh, I think four or five miles, you have a number of universities. I mean, so 
um, it's uh, so you will face a lot of competition. But I think uh, graduating from uh, Boston University will definitely give you a lot of edge. And it's a very well known university uh, in US and throughout the world. So uh, that is one thing. And uh, also uh, another thing is during the program, you'll be uh, studying a lot of US uh, statutes. So, I mean, uh, you will be studying the program in, in the context of uh, say US securities laws and uh, the Dodd-Frank Act, um, which was um, uh, which came after the financial crisis of 2008. So you will have to uh, go through, uh, I mean, you will have to study it. All of that is taught in an international context, but you will be going through a lot of American laws. So, yeah. Great, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Anupam, let's now dive a bit deeper into the banking program that is offered at BU Law. So, all right. Uh, firstly, who is the program really designed for? What are the kind of career goals that one should have in mind if they're applying for the program? And we've pretty much taken care of your reasons for applying to BU Law for the banking program. So let's focus on these two questions. Who is the program designed for? And what are the kind of career goals one should have in mind if they're applying for this program? Um, so it is designed for, uh, I mean, both fresh graduates as well as working professionals. If you have work experience, you will be able to better appreciate the concepts and principles which are taught uh, during the program. And you will already have uh, knowledge of the area. So you will be uh, a step ahead of, say, somebody who is coming just fresh out of law school. And I think uh, so. work experience definitely plays an important role. Um, and I think it also depends uh, how much interest you have uh, in, in the banking program. So like I mentioned earlier, I mean, if you have done any uh, courses during the law school or if you have done internships and uh, in, in this area, it would be very helpful for you in order to, uh, in order to judge if uh, you should go ahead and specialize in this area. Uh, and of course, going through the course content, um, so I think uh, is, is very vital. Uh, I think uh, if you go to the website, uh, they give a description of each and every course uh, that, is be, that will be taught. And uh, it'll be also uh, the faculty, I think, uh, should go through the faculty profile. Yeah. And you will find that in the banking and financial law program, um, these are all industry practitioners. So they are basically working in Boston, um, in the major financial institutions, and they are coming and teaching. So you are going to get a lot of um, uh, real life uh, experience of uh, the of the faculty members. All right, thank you for that, Anupam. We will move to the kind of access that you get to in terms of a network when you're studying at Boston University. But before that, you were talking about work experience. So let's jump right into that. Uh, so what we're seeing on the screen is a screenshot from the university's website, which says that work experience, especially in financial services law is highly valued, but not required. Keeping such an understanding in mind, how do you feel that your work experience really contributed to your education at BU Law? So, uh, I had some, I had, I did do some loan agreements during my, uh, during uh, when I was working in uh, Bombay prior to coming uh, to Boston University. And uh, it's just the general nature of, I, uh, I mean, uh, the documentation process and going through the, um, the of uh, uh, commercial loan agreement. And uh, also knowing that this, uh, this is also an area which is extremely important, uh, especially when it comes for, uh, in, in the in, in transactional work. And I think uh, what was also the, uh, I think, uh, very important uh, factor then was uh, the financial crisis of 2008. I think that uh, uh, was really opened the doors for, uh, I mean, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty uh, throughout the world and especially in US. I mean, it was a great time, I think, to uh, pursue uh, specialization in banking and finance. And I think I was really looking forward to working in uh, different areas of uh, banking. 
Yeah. Uh, so I think I just wanted to explore uh, this further and, um, and hence the specialization in uh, banking and finance. All right, thank you for that Anupam. Uh, earlier in the session, you mentioned that the program is designed for both uh, students who have freshly graduated from law school as well as for working professionals. Uh, you're now at the point in your career where you can kind of comment on both sides, right? Both as a mid-career professional and as uh, a person who has attended the program a few years after working. So do you feel that it makes sense for people to apply right out of law school? And at the other end of the spectrum, uh, would an LLM possibly be more helpful as a mid-career degree? What are your thoughts on that? So, uh, I mean, I, I don't really want to point out the number of years of work experience, but definitely work experience does help. I think uh, when you're fresh out of law school, you're, uh, even though you might be a very bright student, but you are still inexperienced when it comes to, uh, uh, I mean, a number of aspects. Uh, I think, uh, and especially going to a foreign country and uh, doing a course there. And I think why work experience matters so much is because uh, you will be uh, naturally be looking for a job in US. I think that's what most Indian students were looking for. Uh, so I think work experience is vital because when you are uh, sending out your CV to uh, law firms and uh, banks in, uh, in, in US, uh, for jobs, I think uh, they will be looking at your prior work experience. Um, they, because your first degree in law is not from US, so they are you are anyways uh, uh, you are you are anyways not very well versed with uh, the American laws. Yeah. But because you have done a specialization, you definitely have an edge over somebody I think who's done a general LLM, especially when you are uh, applying for in this work area. But I think work experience is extremely important. I think for me, around two to five years of work experience, I think would be a good for, uh, I think uh, you're, you're still not sure about securing a job, but I think it will be very beneficial when you are in the job market. All right. Thank you so much for that, Anupam. And what kind of experience should, uh, should future applicants really be on the lookout for uh, when they're applying for an LLM? Uh, so, um, so you were saying uh, this is prior to uh, uh, what, what kind of work should, yeah. yeah. And this comes in context of what we're seeing on the university's website. It says that work experience, especially in financial services law is highly valued. So in this field, what is the kind of work experience that people should be looking out for? What are the kind of opportunities that they should go for before applying for an LLM? Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, if, if you can get uh, experience of, I mean, working with the banking and finance team of a law firm in India, or um, uh, if, you're, if you can work with a regulator like the Reserve Bank of India, Securities and Exchange Board of India, or if you've even done internships with these organizations. Um, and I think also a lot of US financial institutions have a presence, a strong presence in India. Right. So I think if you uh, if you can work with uh, these organizations and law firms, I think you uh, you're better placed in terms of uh, both uh, for your coursework and as well as uh, as an applicant in the job market in US. Okay, thank you so much for that, Anupam. Let's now take a step back. Let's now talk a bit more about BU Law's banking program. Uh, we're on the second question. So how does, uh, what kind of courses are taught at the BU Law program for banking? And how do these courses equip attorneys for a, for the practical aspects for a career in ba banking law? For instance, uh, what we're seeing on the screen is that the program of study focusing on regulatory courses and transactional courses in the area of, of banking law, securities law, leads to the degree of a master of laws in banking and financial law. So how do these transactional courses really fit in and how do they contribute to the practical aspects of a career in banking law? So, uh, I mean, like here it is mentioned, it uh, does deal with uh, different aspects, like, I mean, both on the regulatory side, the transactional side, and uh, as well as also on the business side. So, I mean, uh, what when, when you're in the class, you're taught, um, on, you're, you're given assignments of uh, basically sample agreements. So you have to work on that. There are class discussions. 
and uh, so basically uh, i mean you are uh, not only with the uh, the readings that are given to you but they also give you uh, they give you assignments which are and you're basically put in a team wherein you have to uh, negotiate uh, say uh, probably a, a commercial loan agreement right. so you are actually put in a situation wherein for example you would be working in say uh, in in a law firm or you would be acting from the say the lender side okay. in uh, in a in a commercial loan agreement so i think uh, that ways it's uh, it's very helpful i mean and because these are industry practitioners who are teaching you so it goes um, it is very helpful okay and how does the B, the banking law program really prepare attorneys for a career if they choose to return to their home country after graduation what's the kind of impact that that has um i think uh, if you if you return back to your country i think of course i mean uh, it is it is helpful because um, i mean you already have a specialization in this area right. and uh, so you would be uh, you definitely have an idea as to what you would be applying for i mean when you are applying to say uh, law firms and and other organizations so you uh, definitely would be i think the slide is not moving uh, it's uh, uh, i still am on the bulos banking program slide yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I think I have I just okay. so uh, yeah. So so I think it does uh, help you. I mean, it opens up opportunities for you. I mean, here. So when you decide to, I mean, you you can apply to say the banking and finance team of a law firm. You can apply to regulators here, and I think uh, it does. Uh, you have. Uh, you have a certain degree of uh, certainty. I mean, you know that you would be uh, specializing in a particular area now, yeah. uh, having already done a course. So I think uh, that ways, and you will be able to justify why you want to work with a particular team in a law firm. And uh, you already have knowledge, and you have also uh, done a considerable amount of. Um, uh, I mean, you have. Uh, you have. The, the uh, you have exposure to the practical aspects of uh, the program as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's just take a quick pause. If anyone in the audience has any questions for Anupam, you can use the chat box. You can unmute yourself, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, and please do participate in the discussion. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Gaurangi Sharma. So yes. my question that I want to pose to you is that it is a generally conceived notion that somebody who holds a JD only has a preferential treatment in the US over somebody who has done only an LLM. So if I compare somebody who has only done a JD and on the other hand, somebody who has done only an LLM, but has specialization for, by way of example, internships. So does this LLM student have a, like any edge over the students or will that be beneficial to us uh, in, in a better manner is something that I wanted to ask you, sir. So definitely if you have a, a JD degree from US, definitely you have an edge over, uh, over uh, the LLM students because uh, I mean, they, they, the law firms there do require you to have a JD degree. But having said that, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for LLM students, and especially the ones who are specializing, um, because uh, it gives them uh, diversity in their workforce. And also, uh, there are uh, country specific desks in uh, law firms. So, uh, large, uh, a number of uh, large law firms in America have uh, country specific uh, uh, departments. So for example, there'll be an India desk in say a law firm based in Boston. So wherein there will be a lot of India centric work. So they definitely they will like to have somebody who has a, a, say a master's degree and uh, who, uh, who will then be uh, joining in uh, say there uh, in, in, in the law firm. But uh, I think, uh, I mean, that is something which is, uh, it's, it is very difficult to balance because I mean, there is definitely when you apply uh, to the law firms in US, they 
uh, they do prefer people with a JD, JD degree. But having said that, I think uh, there, are, uh, there are a number of LLM graduates who are working with uh, law firms in America. It just depends on your, what your prior work experience is and, um, and uh, how well you have done during your LLM. And uh, if you're able to secure an internship in, um, in, in a law firm or uh, with a bank in, um, uh, in US, I think it holds you in good stead and you can thereafter uh, really show your work product. And I think uh, you will be, uh, I think, hired through that process. Uh, sir, in uh, furtherance to that, if somebody, for example, does not want to go in the corporate field, and if, for example, wishes to go in the academia sector, for example, then does LLM uh, help in that sense or no? Uh, so LLM is extremely important for if you, even if you want to go in, in for uh, in academia, I think uh, LLM is a prerequisite for uh, SJD. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I mean, Boston University, that was something which I was looking forward to uh, uh, going into academia. So LLM is definitely a prerequisite for a, for a degree in academia. So... I hope that answers your question. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing in the chat. And if anyone else has any questions, you can please stop us at any point and you can go ahead and ask your questions. But for now, let's jump into the section on employment opportunities, the kind of opportunities that are available to students after graduating. So Anupam, let's take on the first question. So in your experience, what are the different kinds of opportunities that are available to students after graduating with an LLM in banking law? So, um, see, uh, like I mentioned, I mean, uh, the, I mean, you will be looking at uh, applying to uh, law firms and uh, of course, not restricting yourself just to Boston, but you, you can apply to different cities uh, on the East Coast. Uh, I think uh, the East Coast has uh, the most amount of opportunities. And of course, what is another important factor is where you will be, uh, you will have to clear the bar exam of that state. So I think only New York and California allow uh, international students to sit for the bar. But of course, in my, in, uh, during my, uh, during my LLM academic year, they were allowing people to sit for the Massachusetts bar, provided you uh, complete uh, certain other courses also. So uh, that is one thing. And then you have the opportunity to work with uh, banks. You have the opportunity to work with regulators and uh, like the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, uh, Federal Reserve Bank has a presence in, um, in Boston. And there are other branches in uh, US. Um, and then, of course, um, uh, like um, somebody just asked about uh, going into academia. So research is another area where you can strongly uh, consider after your uh, LLM. And having also the fact that you have now specialized, I think you can, uh, you can reach out to uh, professors in this area and uh, you can further uh, further, actually, uh, the you can you can pick your area in which you want to do your uh, PhD. All right, thank you for that, Anupam. Aside from the opportunities, what are the kind of challenges that are faced by international students in finding opportunities, and how can future applicants go about meeting such challenges? So I think uh, the biggest challenge uh, faced by the uh, international students is I think the the visa requirements. I think uh, the a lot of um, they uh, they they prefer that uh, if you are a U.S. citizen or you are a permanent resident of uh, of U.S. Okay. Uh, but because they are not really willing to uh, sponsor uh, H-1B visa for uh, for international students. But it just depends on uh, the profile of a particular student and how proactive that student has been during their coursework and in generally in networking. And if they're able to secure an internship and uh, through that, uh, they can convince the employer to sponsor them for a work uh, visa. 
also uh, another important factor i think is uh, uh, when you have to when you're going in a field like law is you have to consider that there's an oversupply of us trained lawyers right. uh, law is a very uh, uh, sought after field in uh, us so you will def you're definitely competing against a lot of uh, us um, uh, graduates uh, us law graduates so it uh, it becomes even more important for you to uh, bring in uh, some amount of uh, i mean work experience and uh, be very proactive during your coursework and in that networking becomes extremely important um so and you should always be open to different opportunities i think uh, where you can leverage your legal skills and uh, i think uh, internships uh, are just a great opportunity to showcase your uh, uh, showcase your uh talent and i think uh, i think uh, probably these are the major challenges and i think you can uh, you can overcome them by uh by doing taking certain steps like uh, networking and uh, doing well in your coursework and prior work experience so uh, on that note since we are talking about uh, networking and internships uh, let's just move to the next section uh, which is opportunities in boston so what we're seeing on the screen is a tiny snippet uh, from the brochure that is issued by the university for the banking program the first part of it says that you learn from nationally and internationally recognized experts from law firms financial institutions government agencies and consulting firms who have experience in teaching in the financial services area so the kind of access that you're getting to both in terms of alumni as well as faculty does it create avenues for potential employment and if so uh, how can future applicants go about leveraging this network in order to get these opportunities uh so definitely it does i mean uh, uh the the alumni network and uh, uh, the faculty uh, in particular is yeah. extremely important so attending say uh, seminars uh, meeting alumni at job fairs going for various meets uh, so for example i was fortunate enough to have having attended uh, uh, a seminar which was conducted by a law firm called wilmer hale in boston yeah uh, wherein uh, people from different law schools came and i think you could meet the industry practitioners there and you have to uh, you have to follow up with them and uh, just uh, just uh, uh, show to them that you're interested in working in uh, in their organization and uh, i think uh, the faculty is extremely important i think uh, because it's something which they are able to see your uh, the, the, you 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 can the faculty is somebody whom you can reach out to uh, i mean you you are it uh, you participating in the class so they know you as a person they know you as a student Right. and uh, these are the faculty members most of them the majority of them are industry practitioners in boston yeah. uh, they are working at large financial institutions and very well known law firms so um, and i think uh, if you are active in the class if you are uh, if you are doing well in your assignments uh, if you have done well in your coursework i think it will go a long way in uh, convincing your faculty that they recommend you uh for an internship opportunity or for uh, interviews in uh, in uh, various organizations in uh, in US and i think uh, we were also at uh, boston university we were given a membership of the boston bar association right. uh, the bba boston bar association holds a number of uh, seminars on a weekly basis i think uh, it is important for a student to be attending these seminars during your coursework which is not easy i mean but you will have to balance it with your coursework and uh, there's massachusetts bar association as well so i think uh, uh, the coursework is definitely very hectic but you have to uh, you have to be in touch with industry practitioners by attending these seminars and networking events and uh, i think being proactive is uh, very important because you have to uh you have to uh be going at these events uh from the point of view of uh building up your network and uh because you know that you have to apply for jobs uh after your course ends so i think uh it is very important from that point of view in fact interestingly um uh i mean 
BU had a very good uh, faculty. I mean, there were two, I still recall, there were two professors who used to fly in from, uh, one used to fly in from Philadelphia and one used to fly in from Pittsburgh to teach courses here. So I think uh, you definitely have people uh, outside of Boston also with whom you can, uh, you have uh, an opportunity to connect and uh, when you're looking out for jobs in that city. All right, thank you for that Anupam. Uh, let's talk a bit more about internships and let's come back to the snippet. Uh, it says that meanwhile, the vibrant Boston economy enables semester long, in, uh, semester -long financial internship and creates an opportunity for you to gain practical experience in financial services law at a law firm, financial services organization, uh, not-for-profit organizations or regulatory agency. So first, first off, is it possible to convert these internships into job opportunities in the US? And second, how can students really go about improving their chances of uh, making these conversions happen? So uh, I think this is related to the previous question. So I think it really depends on how many people you're reaching out to All right. uh, and also following up with them. So persistence is very important. It's seen as a sign of uh, entrepreneurship in the US. I think if you are regularly following it, uh, up with them, uh, I think they start taking you very seriously. Okay. And uh, it is important that you, if you can secure an internship uh, during your coursework, preferably the second semester, because the first semester you're still new to the uh, country, you're new to the city, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, course uh, coursework load. So I think uh, it becomes very important because uh, when you're doing an internship, you can really uh, show uh, the, uh, I mean, you, you can really showcase your talent. You can, you, and uh, you can really show to them that you are able to accomplish uh, uh, what uh, the you can accomplish your uh, you 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 accomplish in your work, and uh, I think uh, uh, Boston University also the uh, the career services office helps you in uh, providing internships, but apart from that, uh, it is very important that you as a student also reach out independently to faculty members to. Uh, uh, to people you have met during the seminars or uh, the uh, other events organized by Boston Bar Association right. and just generally uh, using LinkedIn as a source. Uh, so I think it's very important uh, uh, from that point of view. And I think internships are really the key to securing a job in US. Okay, excellent. Uh, Anupam, thank you so much for that answer. Let's now just take a step back and complete the remaining section on employment opportunities. So uh, as I understand, banking is a highly specialized field, but how does it compare with a general LLM when it comes to job opportunities? Do you feel that it fares better or worse? What's your take on that? Uh, so definitely a specialization is uh, definitely will always be uh, on a higher footing as compared to a general LLM. Um, because you can, uh, when you are applying also, you can justify why you are applying for that particular position. Okay. And uh, I think master's is a degree, LLM, uh, master of laws is a degree wherein uh, you are, I think, required to specialize, I think, because you have already done uh, various areas of law in your, in your, during your undergraduation. So I think uh, it's, uh, it's, it, I think it holds true for, uh, not only law, but other fields as well. I think masters is a, uh, it's, it's a degree wherein you should be specializing. But having said that, uh, there is now a lot of competition within the specialization itself. So there are a number of people who are also doing say a specialization in banking law. So you, uh, I mean, probably you will be facing competition from your peers. And uh, there are a number of universities which are maybe not offering the same uh, uh, kind of program which Boston University are offering, but they're offering a program which is similar and wherein you can uh, basically choose the courses wherein you can uh, carve out a specialization in banking law. Okay. So I think it is important. Uh, specialization is definitely, uh, it's, it's important. But I think you have to also keep in mind uh, that the other factors like your prior work experience and uh, if you're able to secure an internship, uh, 
uh, I think these are also extremely vital uh, for you uh, to go ahead after your after you complete the LLM degree. Excellent. Uh, so I believe we've talked uh, about the value of a specialization within banking and finance law as well. So we can skip the last question and move on. And let's now talk a bit about opportunities outside the US. So far, we've only talked about job prospects within the United States. So uh, what are the kind of employment prospects for international students in the field of banking law in jurisdictions other than the US? Do these opportunities exist and how can students go about finding them? So opportunities do exist. I mean, of course, your home country is one. So yeah. I mean, you can you have a variety of options and the issue of work visa will not be there. So I mean, uh, definitely uh, you can apply to um, the regulators and law firms here and yeah. uh, the banks in India. But I think uh, it is also since you are in uh, you specialize in the banking and uh, finance uh, uh, LLM. I think you can uh, reach out to uh, various branches of the World Bank. So World Bank offers an internship program. Uh, it has a young professionals program, if I am, I think if it still exists. Okay. Uh, and uh, it has offices uh, throughout the world. So I think, uh, of course, you should, you, you should, your first uh, preference should be in Washington, DC. I mean, that's where, and uh, through that, I think uh, that is one. Then there are other developmental banks like uh, the Asian Development Bank, the African Development Bank. And it is, it'll be very good if you already know a person in these organizations who can actually guide you as to the process and who can give a reference. Because I think uh, reference becomes extremely important when you are applying to these big organizations. Uh, otherwise, it's very easy for your uh, for your your CV to uh, be lost in the labyrinth of applications. So I think uh, then you can apply to fintech firms. Uh, I think that's uh, really uh, it's, it's really picking up. Uh, so I think uh, uh, these are the ones. Uh, but uh, and uh, you can look at uh, the European Central Bank. But I think uh, they're also. Uh, there is the issue of, um, I mean, if you have a work visa, I mean, uh, it's it's difficult for non-Europeans to apply there. So I think, uh, and um, uh, there are a lot of microfinance organizations uh, throughout the world. So it clearly depends on how proactive you are as a, as a student. And I think uh, there will be a lot of pressure on a student because you have to do well in your coursework as well as you have to do the uh, the other segment, which is uh, applying and looking for opportunities. And I think the more people you meet during your LLM, and definitely it's a great platform because you're living, staying in a city like Boston, yeah. uh, which is a global city. I mean, and it's a great city for education. I think you can, if you meet these people, you will get to know about more opportunities, which otherwise, if you just do internet uh, uh, research, I think you will not get to know. Okay. And once you know a person who's, uh, say, working with that organization, he will be able to uh, refer to you. Uh, he will be able to refer you uh, to, say, somebody who, say, you're interested in working uh, for another organization. So I think uh, there's a chain which, uh, which is formed. Right. And I think uh, another important thing, which before I forget, which I wanted to mention earlier, just keep a writing sample handy. That's something which will be required even when you apply for internships, say even in the first semester. So that is something by which they judge your uh, writing skills. And of course, for Indians, it's not a problem because English is like almost de facto first language for us. But I think they will always ask for a writing sample. And as you progress during the coursework, I think they will ask you for a writing sample specific to the banking and finance program. So uh, if you have any publications, it's very helpful, but uh, just keep a writing sample handy. All right. Thank you for that piece of advice, Anupam. Uh, we just have one more crowdsource question that we'd like you to take a look at. Uh, I'll read it out. Would US be better than Europe for banking programs from the point of view of jobs? So um, US definitely, yes. I think uh, because... Uh, you're doing your degree in US, so you're definitely uh, they will look at it, you look at you uh, more seriously. All right. uh, and you are because since you have done a degree from their country, and I think uh, one of the biggest hurdles in um, 
in Europe is the language. Yeah. So if you're not uh, applying for a job in say UK, I mean, outside of that, I think you need to have the language skills uh, to apply for uh, positions. Uh, so I think uh, US is definitely better. I think that way, unless you're going and doing an LLM in Europe, uh, in one of the European countries, then of course, uh, I think you're better placed to apply there. Uh, but if you're doing a degree, LLM degree in US, I think uh, you're much better placed uh, and you should be focusing on uh, US. Okay, then. So that uh, brings us to the last section of today's session, which is on career benefits. And after that, we can just take a quick pause again for any crowdsource questions, if anyone has any questions in the attendees. And after that, I think we can put an end to the session. So, all right. So, first off, uh, Anupam, what are the ways in which the LLM in banking and financial law from BU Law has helped your career? How do you feel? What What is the kind of impact that you felt uh, 10 years after graduation? So, uh, it is definitely, I mean, I was able to gain uh, knowledge and understanding of uh, banking as a field. I think uh, I was, uh, when I went through the course content and when I applied, uh, I was really looking forward to increasing my uh, knowledge in this field, All right. which I was really satisfied with. I was satisfied. I, I was really, it was wonderful to have uh, the, the, the faculty uh, who were uh, industry practitioners. And I think uh, it, was, uh, it was something, uh, I think an experience of a lifetime uh, and I think uh, also the way the, the method of teaching uh, was very different from uh, the way they teach you in India. Right. So that is, uh, that is I think, uh, it just becomes an, a part and parcel of your personality. And also, uh, it's opened a large network of uh, community. I mean, it's, uh, you have alumni from this program throughout the world. Okay. Uh, I think so. Any country that you go to, and uh, you will find uh, graduates from Boston University, and uh, especially in the banking and finance program. So I think uh, it does. It has enhanced uh, my profile, and I have. Uh, I also have. I know now people from uh, different countries and who are working in this area. So. Uh, all right. And as a parting word, uh, do you have any advice for students and professionals who wish to build a career in banking law with or without an LLM from Boston University? Uh, I think uh, so. You should you should try and take up more courses during the uh, uh, during the undergrad level. Right. I think uh, that ways. I think you already have. Uh, then you are able to gain knowledge in this area. And if you're able to even secure internships, uh, wherein you get an opportunity to say work with a banking and finance team at a law firm, uh, which is going to be hard. I mean, because you cannot really specify uh, that you want to work with a banking and finance team, but at least uh, I think you can try that place. There are a lot of online courses now. So at least uh, you will, uh, you'll get to know the nitty gritties of uh, what you will be, uh, uh, what you will come across and uh, whether you want, you are really interested in specializing in this, uh, in this field. And I think uh, also uh, having awareness about the inter in intersection of uh, banking law and technology, because as I mentioned uh, that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, FinTech firms, which are now, I think uh, coming up and I think uh, it's very important that you make yourself aware about uh, the latest developments in this area yeah. so that uh, you are more dynamic when you're making a choice uh, for a specialization. Uh, so I think uh, these things will also help you in uh, choosing a specialization. All right, thank you so much for that Anupam. That brings, it, brings me to the end of my questions. If anyone in the audience has any questions, please, uh, as before, you can unmute yourself. You can use the chat box and ask away. Yes, sir. It's me again. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so my question is, uh, firstly, as you already mentioned that it's 
a very it's a very difficult job for international students to be appearing for uh, these bar exams so my question is whether or not uh, massachusetts bar exam is allowed to be given by indian students and second question is in these country specific desks uh, of the indian based law firms which are there or law firms which provide for country specific desks do they also require this bar uh, license or no so to your first question uh, i think you need to do uh, as far as i remember you need to do two specific courses in order to qualify for the massachusetts bar association uh, one was professional responsibility and the second one i am not able to recall at this moment but you will have to check with the llm office at boston university as to uh, whether uh, i think uh, uh, whether you can still uh, go through these you can still do these courses and qualify for the uh, to give the massachusetts bar uh, but uh, they definitely i think uh, since they opened the doors in 2011 i think they would still be carrying on with uh, uh, the uh, with uh, i mean giving the opportunity to students to international students to give the uh, bar exam for massachusetts Uh, uh and also more importantly you are a graduate of boston university so i think uh, maybe i think uh, because you're studying in that particular state i think also uh, gives you um, probably uh, provides you uh, an edge over others because you are uh, you're already a graduate of uh, the law school of massachusetts secondly i think uh, the country uh, specific desk are uh, mainly uh, mostly in uh, very big uh, law firms uh, so for example white and case uh, a lot of other white shoe law firms in uh, in in the united states in uh, in cities like uh, new york boston san francisco uh, i think uh, they uh, they basically uh, they basically uh, if you can just repeat your second question i Yes, sir. I said that in these country-specific desks that the law firms provide, for that also, do we require this uh, bar license to to be clearing this exam or no? Yeah. So bar license is required if you're practicing in any area. I mean, uh, you whether you'll be also joining a bank, or you'll be working in a law firm, or you'll be working with a regulator, you need to have a license to practice. So I think. Uh, you can uh, new york uh, you can give the new york bar in california and also i think the massachusetts bar so you will be you can only practice in these particular states outside of that uh, you will uh, you, they, they will give you a certain amount of time to qualify for the bar exam but beyond that if you don't hold a bar license you cannot work uh, uh, with a law firm in that particular state thanks a lot sir okay All right. If anyone else has uh, any questions, please. You can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's me and her. I have a question. In furtherance of the same thing, like, uh, if I ha- I hold a bar license, does that uh affect my visa status in any way? Or. Uh... So, what kind of visa are you on, right? like uh if i go i'll go on f1 visa right, right. and uh, once i join a company maybe i get a h1b visa but that will be like for a limited period of time so uh your bar license is is no way connected to your uh, your visa status uh okay. the bar license just uh, qualifies you qualify your it's it's uh, it's the prerequisite to practice in a particular state so okay. if you and also if you move from one state to another you need to again appear for the bar exam of that particular state so it has uh, nothing to do with your visa status okay thank you welcome let's just wait for one more minute anupam and then we can start <laughs> the session i have one question regarding transfer pricing uh, is, can i ask this sure, sure. go ahead yeah 
Yeah. I want to do LLM from Boston University can and I want to practice in India only. Can doing a transfer pricing, uh, can doing an LLM and transfer pricing from Boston University will any way help me uh, doing transfer pricing practice in India? So, uh, I'm, I, I mean, you will have to check particularly which, uh, because uh, the courses which I did uh, in banking and finance program, I did not deal with transfer pricing. Uh, so I think you need to uh, check the course content uh, from the website. And you can also reach out uh, to the uh, LLM program office at uh, Boston University. And uh, you can just see what, uh, whether uh, uh, you, you, can, you can also interact with, uh, get in touch with the faculty member and see if uh, that will be helpful for your uh, practice in India. But uh, personally, I have not done uh, transfer pricing, so I'll not be able to comment on that. Hi, also, uh, if you have this query, you can also write to us at info at collegeit.org and we would be happy to pass it along to Boston University's uh, LLM department and we'll get back to you with any answers. Okay, thank yes. you. You can also reach out uh, to bu llm at bu.edu. So I think that's uh, that's another additional link to what Sanchez just mentioned. Okay. What I'll thank do, you. I'll go ahead and mention uh, our ID over here in the chat. Uh, if anyone has any further queries, please, you can direct it to us. You can also use the ID that uh, Anupam suggested. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, so I don't think there's anything in the chat. There's, there's no further questions. So Anupam, that brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you so much for taking the time for the call. It was really helpful. The answers were super detailed and, uh, and uh, helpful. And we will be going ahead and sharing the recording on our website as well. Thank you. Thank you for the giving me the opportunity to be here. It was our pleasure. And... Uh, just a heads up, Boston University is providing application fee waivers to all of you who wish to apply for an LLM at BU Law. Please write to us at the email which I mentioned in the chat and we'll, we can get the process expedited for you if that's something that you would like. All right then, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.